Hello everyone and welcome to this video. I just want to break down a little video I found that the BBC has done. They tend to be quite biased. So they're talking about photography equipment and grey imports and basically all the way through the programme they are slating grey imports saying they are fake, uh, they are counterfeit, that sort of thing. And it's not true. They're basically lying to you, the general public, I wanted to address what they're saying to everyone. Um, sure, changing um, serial numbers is a bad thing and a no-no and most companies shouldn't be doing that because it means it's very difficult to track where the product has come from, what market it's come from. But generally a grey import is quite simply a pro the same product from the same factory and I just want to address what they're saying in this video. Um, you shouldn't be afraid of buying grey imports providing you're fully aware of the consequences, the benefits and the negatives, right? So let's have a look at what they're saying and I'll give you my comments on each segment that I break down. This digital camera is packed with technology and can deliver a brilliant and memorable picture. It's expensive, of course, but I have the security of knowing that if anything goes wrong, there's a warranty, so it can be fixed or even replaced. Well, that's what would happen with a genuine camera. This one is fake. So is all this camera equipment. And as we're about to find out, even the professionals can find it hard to spot the difference. So he just said all this equipment is fake and it comes down to your warranty. Well. There is something I think you guys need to know. Um, your warranting is not completely worthless. The only difference is if your lens, right, comes from Hong Kong, comes from America, comes from Australia, you can send that lens back to the country of origin, get it repaired and get it returned to you. Yes, you will have to pay for postage, carriage, um, get tracking number, whatever you want to do. However, it can be repaired under the warranty in the country it came from. Remember, the equipment he's going through on, on this program is from the same factory. If you buy a lens, right, in Australia, it's manufactured in Japan. If you buy a lens in America, it's manufactured in a factory in Japan. If you buy a lens in Asia or Hong Kong, it's from the same factory in Japan. Don't you get that? And this is what he doesn't get in this program. So I just want to break down that the warranty isn't completely worthless. Um, another way around this is you can send it to your local retailer, local manufacturer within your own country and get a repair done. I've done that with a Sigma lens that was bought in America, got it repaired in the UK. Yes, it costs you money. So you've got to weigh up this. Is, are you saving enough money to justify paying for the repair at some down down the line? But then again, it might never need repairing. That's another possibility. You might buy a £2,000 lens, save yourself a £1,000, and nothing ever goes wrong with it. Um, generally, I would say with an L lens, a high quality professional lens, it's probably unlikely going to fail. Cameras, they're a bit more sensitive to failure, sure. Um, but if you buy a professional product, it isn't a given that it will fail. Anyway, back to the video. These days it seems everyone is into photography. The global photographic market is now worth over £50 billion. Pounds. Some budding British photographers are being duped into buying cameras that aren't what they appear to be. Eager photographers snapping up what looks like an online bargain could be in for a nasty surprise. Tristan Finlay is a professional photographer with a successful photography business. He needs reliable camera equipment and backup if it lets him down. I need to have equipment that's fully supported by the manufacturer's warranty, it has to be reliable, and I need to know that I can get a replacement camera sent from the manufacturer in a very short amount of time to carry on with whatever it is I'm shooting. Tristan needed to buy a new Canon digital SLR called the 7D. 
It's a professional camera which cost around £1,600 at the time, without lenses. He found one online for £100 less than that. So this professional photographer claims that he needs equipment to be repaired quickly. Um, who relies on one camera alone? No professional photographer will rely on one camera. And anyone out there, guys, if you're someone who's serious about photography, make sure you've got at least two spare backup cameras at all times. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how, how much you've spent on your lens, your camera, whatever, always make sure that you've got backup because any professional worth their salt will have extra cameras, extra lenses to fall back on to do their job. Um, and that's the case with most professionals. Um, a lot of people, especially professionals these days, actually pay for insurance. Insurance is actually a better way of safeguarding yourself than any warranty is. Because generally speaking, Canon and Nikon warranties last for one year. Yes, Tamron and Sigma third party uh, uh, lens manufacturers do offer longer warranties than that, three to five years. But that's probably because they haven't got as much confidence in, as in their um, equipment as say Canon and Nikon have. And obviously, Canon and Nikon have been around for a very, very long time. And Sony recently have come into the, the game as well. So what I'm trying to say is, if you're a professional, never rely on just one camera body at any given time. If you're a wedding photographer, you certainly know that you'll never rely on one camera because it's like any equipment can fail, um, no matter what warranty you've got. Everything seemed 100% normal. The camera was in its original box. There was nothing, nothing untoward about it at all. Tristan had no reason to think anything was wrong until he decided to go on a photography trip abroad. Like a car, you, you tend to service a car before you go on a long trip. I decided to do the same with camera. I sent it back to Canon for their professional service. Canon checked the camera's unique serial number against their records. The serial number is used to trace the origins of the camera. They came back to me and said well, the serial number has been uh, been changed and we don't make a, a, a cam camera with a seven digit serial number. And Canon stated that because of that it was classed by them as counterfeit and was not eligible for any warranty. Right, Canon is divided into multiple regions within the world. So if you contact Canon and give them a serial number, providing nothing has been tampered with, I'm not going to say it, whether these equipment on this show that have been discussed have been tampered or have been, I don't know. But it's likely that Canon UK will not have a record of the serial number. However, if you were to contact Canon America, Canon Australia, Canon Hong Kong, it's very possible they'll have a record of the serial number. What you've got to remember is the equipment is all made in the same factory. So lenses, cameras sold in America, manufactured in a factory in Japan. Lenses and cameras made in the UK, made in Japan. Lenses and cameras made in Hong Kong, made in Japan. You see what, what I'm trying to get here is all the equipment, no matter where you buy it from, no matter what region you buy it from, is made in the same factory. Providing it's a legitimate product, right, and not some sort of counterfeit attempt by some of the companies in China, because, the, you know, I did encounter um, a problem with a battery grip that had been, it was a bad copy, basically. Um, but I knew it was a, quite a bad copy just by looking at the quality. But what I'm trying to get at here is, what they're banging on about is it's counterfeit, it's fake. It's not. A grey import is not a fake product. It came, comes from the same factory where it's made, no matter what region it's sent to. The only issue with the different regions is it comes to customs and export and, and uh, taxes and that sort of thing. Now, what a lot of these companies do is ship in bulk and they try and slip it through customs or try and slip the majority of it through customs. So in general, 
um, they won't pay as much uh, import duty and VAT as you would if you were doing it um, legitimately. But that's just something I wanted to point out. Tristan had unwittingly bought a grey import camera destined for sale outside Europe. In the US and Asia, different manuals, accessories and warranties are offered. We spoke to Lee Boniface from Canon. So this product is made for the Asian market. What's happened here, the importer has uh, taken off the serial number on the side of the box. That should match the serial number on the uh, bottom of the camera there. And I've got one here, it's been put on over the top of the genuine serial number. That serial number doesn't mean anything uh, and therefore the, this consumer who bought this product, unfortunately they wouldn't have a valid warranty. Right, this guy from Canon is clearly saying there's an issue with the warranty and I'm not denying that. But at, at the same time he's not clearly saying the product is fake and counterfeit like B the BBC are. So but all the different regions when they make their equipment and they send it off to different regions to be sold, right? It's made in the same factory in Japan. Just remember that. So it's not necessarily you've got a fake product. Surely, sure the seller might have possibly cocked up the actual serial number or put something over that he shouldn't have done. That's possible. I'm not saying they haven't done that. But what I'm also saying is it's likely the camera is still good. It's still made in Japan by Canon. So it's the same product still. It's just a warranty you've got to think about. Uh, another way around the warranty problem is consider getting some insurance. You know pay a little bit of insurance to cover the camera if something goes wrong. So if you can't get it repaired, um, you can claim on your insurance. But it's very likely that Canon in the UK would repair it for you, but they would charge you. Fake serial numbers don't show up on Canon's database, making the identity of the camera impossible to trace. Tristan bought his camera in the UK, but it was a camera intended by Canon for sale in Asia, not Europe or the UK. He bought it online. Some online shops are able to sell grey imports at low prices because that way they avoid paying the correct tax or duties when the camera enters the UK. So let's talk about duty and VAT imports. Um, sure, yeah, they do send it uh, in a container in bulk and it does avoid a lot of the customs charges. I do agree with that. Um, and it might be a problem if you go on holiday and you come back and they say customs was to inspect your camera equipment and say where did you get this from and was import paid on it and you might be liable for that import duty you've just got to remember that um, or alternatively if it comes from Hong Kong um, outside the EU sometimes they do get it shipped to a, fact, um, a warehouse in the EU and that's why it, it, it slips through basically however if it comes directly from Hong Kong, you might be stung by import duty and VAT. Just keep that in mind. But again, like, I, like I've been saying all along, it's from the same factory in Japan. Um, it might be destined for different regions and have different accessories, which generally is just instruction manual in different languages, um, different power adapters, um, different uh, voltage... Um, plugs, you know, for the accessories for charging your batteries up. But in general, the camera is the same. So I don't think you should be too concerned about buying a grey import, providing you buy a quality product. Um, I would probably advise not buying one of the kit lenses because they're cheap, um, very easy and cheap to replace in the UK anyway. Um, but when it comes to L lenses and some of the professional cameras, don't be too concerned about buying a grey import. You can save a lot of money. And you only get a one year warranty anyway. And to be honest with you, I've never had a Canon lens fail on me, especially within the first year. Um, a lot of my camera lenses were three to five years old and they never failed on me. Um, so sometimes you don't need a, war uh, a warranty. Uh, I know the likes of Sigma and Tamron give you a long one. I think Tamron offer five years and Sigma offer three years within the UK. I know in America you get a five year warranty with Sigma. Um, but, you know, it's, the decision is up to you because sometimes you can make massive savings as well with grain pots. Um, so, back to the video. 
Left without a warranty, Tristan was lucky that nothing had gone wrong with his camera on the shoot. Photos capture a moment in time, and if that moment passes, it doesn't come back. But what if something had gone wrong? Photographer Craig Skinner bought a Nikon D7000 digital SLR camera online for a discounted £600. I felt a really good quality camera, and I was just really excited to get on and start taking some shots with it. But on his first big wedding photography job, something went wrong. I could, I could tell something wasn't quite right. The autofocus just wasn't working properly. It just wouldn't focus on what I wanted it to focus on. Um, you know, I spent all this, all this money on it. You expect it to behave and do what it's supposed to do. The results of the autofocus failure were disastrous for Craig's photos and potentially for his reputation. The couple in the photo, the couple weren't, weren't sharp, they weren't in focus, which is not usable. I, I would never give an image like that to a client. Back home, Craig called Nikon about the faulty camera. They told him to send it in, as it should still be under warranty. But it wasn't. They said, basically, do you know this camera's a fake? Right, let's talk about camera equipment that could fail. Um, it's very possible you could buy a lens in the UK, right, that's got the one year warranty, and on the 13th month point in time, right, the autofocus stops working. What are you going to do? You're in the same situation as this guy is. Um, obviously, he's not had it that long. But what I'm trying to point out is one year warranty, is it really worth maybe? Four, five, six hundred pound difference to you. It's up to you to make that decision. Um, in terms of, you know, him taking some professional pictures, he's a professional. He should be using multiple cameras. So in the event, he should be seeing that in the viewfinder anyway. If it's not sharp, he should be looking to see. Oh, it's not sharp. What sort of photographer relies on autofocus all the time? You know, I started out learning photography um, using manual focus. Autofocus was a, a brand new thing at the time, and you even even with autofocus, you always check the image to see if it's sharp because it might not be calibrated properly. Um, it may be faulty. You know, this guy could have turned the autofocus off, right, and taken pictures using his eye through the lens. That's what that's what an SLR is. You can see through the lens and see if it's in focus. Or look at the um, the actual LCD screen and zooming in to see if it's in focus. You should be doing those things as a professional. But this guy this is just so solely reliant on autofocus, which is unbelievable to me. How can you rely solely on autofocus um, to do... What's the point of being a photographer? A photographer is using your, your eyes, using your skill, your knowledge, and aperture, depth of fit, depth of field, shutter speed. Um, and trying to capture that image sharp, you know, it's your job to do that. Um, if you're just relying on autofocus, you're not a photographer, are you? Let's face it. I couldn't believe it. The serial number on the bottom of the camera had been replaced with another one. Craig wasn't covered by a warranty. Like Tristan, he'd unwittingly bought a grey import camera. But in his case, the camera was actually faulty. With a faked serial number, there was no way of knowing whether it was even a genuine Nikon product. Whether it was the entire camera body that had been replaced, or, or just the, the label on the bottom of the camera, I, I don't know. Maybe uh, it was it had been stolen in the past. Um, I really don't know. We spoke to Nikon about Craig's case. They said, we can confirm that the serial number on the camera which Mr Skinner purchased was tampered with by an unknown third party, which unfortunately invalidates the product warranty. In order to avoid the problems Mr Skinner faced, we recommend customers check the list of approved retailers on the Nikon website for guaranteed satisfaction. Right, I just want to talk about what's been said here. And they're basically saying, right, that Nikon won't know whether it's a legit camera or not. Come on, who are you kidding? Don't you think the engineer who looks at the components is gonna know if it's the, the legitimate product or an attempt to fake it or um, make a counterfeit version of it? Surely, don't you think 
Nikon knows how their cameras are built, what parts are used, and on parts there'll be part numbers. So it'll know, Nikon will know whether this is counterfeit or a legitimate product. And it's likely it's made in Japan in a factory and it is a legitimate Nikon product. Yes, I do agree with the issue with the serial number being tampered with. Um, I suspect that's been done because they're trying to sell the product that was made for the Asian market in the UK and they want to make it appear as if it's a UK product. But generally speaking, there shouldn't be an issue with grey imports. You will save a lot of money with a grey import, but you've got to make sure you choose your product carefully. If you buy a professional camera, make sure it is one of the pro level cameras, not one of the budget ones. And when it comes to a lens, you want to make sure it's one of the weather sealed high quality lenses, not one of the cheap budget kit ones. So choose your product carefully when you're thinking about a grey import. And choose a company carefully as well, because there are some bad import companies out there will just take your money and won't send you the product. So you need to research the company as well. Fake Britain wanted to find out how big the problem of fake camera equipment is. So we went to see Chris Cheeseman, news editor of Amateur Photographer magazine, who agreed to run a survey. The results showed that many consumers are being duped. The biggest source were grey market suppliers. One of our readers unwittingly bought a lens as a cheaper grey market import. I believed I was getting the same product, just cheaper, as I bought it outside the UK. The problem comes when you want to claim on the warranty and they just turn around and say sorry, and this is classed as a counterfeit camera. I think this guy from Amateur Photography magazine has been, I don't know, put a lot of pressure on him by the BBC to say it's a fake product. Um, as he clearly states in this video, in this segment, he says, it's when you try and claim on the warranty. Now, for me, most equipment will will fail. Well, it's not give, a given that it will fail, but if it's going to fail, it's going to fail after the first year. And since you only get a one-year warranty in the first place, you've got to think about this. Um, is that one-year warranty potentially worth half the price of the equipment that you're buying. I'll give you an example, a really good example. Right, the Canon 100-400 Mark II L lens, right, you can pick up for around 13 to 1400 pounds, right? Now, if you buy the same lens, right, from a UK vendor, it will cost you about 1800 pounds. So you're gonna save 400 pounds by buying the grey import version. And let's say that UK version failed after after two years, right? Two years it fails. What are you gonna do? You can't claim on a warranty because your warranty expired. The grey import might fail after two years as well. It's made in the same factory. Um, and in my experience, L lenses, when it comes to camera equipment, um, they don't tend to fail very often either. Even like if you buy a 1D body, it's unlikely to fail within the first three years um, and you only get a one year warranty. Does it matter where it comes from as long as it works? Occasionally you might have a faulty product and I'm not saying that will never happen. But what you've got to remember is Canon, Nikon, Sony, they're there to make money. So even if you do buy a grey import, you can still send it to the manufacturer. Now I don't know about Nikon because I know they can be quite funny, but I know in Canon's um, world that they will repair um, grey imports, right? I know for a definite Sigma will, um, and I would have thought the Tamron will, providing you're willing to pay for the repair. Sometimes that repair bill can be very costly. Um, Someone came to me once and told me about um, a Panasonic 100 to 400 lens that cost them uh, about 1,500 pounds, but the repair bill was gonna be 900. And it was after the one year warranty had passed, you know. So keep that in mind. Um, but generally speaking, 
I wouldn't hesitate buying an L lens as a grey import, providing it's the legitimate product, right, and it does what I want it to do. So it is a risk when it comes to a warranty, but ask yourself this, is a one year warranty worth potentially a quarter of the cost of the product? To me, I don't think it is. Um, and you don't know how much the, the repair bill might be. The repair, to, to repair something on the lens, might cost Canon £100 to repair, and they might charge you 200 or they might charge you £1,000. You just don't know. That's the answer to that. It's up to you to make your mind up whether you think a warranty is really worth it. Some professional photographers say it is, but if you're a professional photographer, you'll have a bit of money to buy the better lens, the better equipment, so it doesn't fail. And if you're a professional, you'll have multiple lenses, multiple cameras, just in case they fail. Even if you buy a lens from the UK, you know, from Amazon.co.uk, from Jessup's a camera shop, um, it still might fail, you know. And if it's over a year old or two years old, what are you going to do? Ring up Canon and say, hey, oh, this don't work, what am I going to do? They'll say, how old is it? It's over a year. Sorry, mate, your warranty's expired. Bye. Choice is yours, mate. Make your mind up. Consumers aren't just unwittingly buying grey imports with fake serial numbers. Some of the equipment they're buying is completely fake. From SD cards to batteries to cameras, obviously camera bags, filters, tripods, a whole load of things which uh, are cropping up will potentially be fake. Right, one thing that's been said in this video is buyers are unwittingly buying grey imports. Who are you kidding? If you see a lens for £1,000 on Amazon.co.uk, right? Or Jessup's, which is a camera shop. And then you see a seller on the internet selling it for £600. Come on. It's not rocket science to realise. It might not be um, a UK product. It's, it's quite obvious that it's not. And if you look at the, the company's um, about page, they'll tell you that it's sourced from uh, a different location such as Hong Kong, which is one of the main places for sourcing, um, you know, grey imports. So I just want to make that clear that everyone is aware of it. Now, the issue regarding fake products such as chargers, um, SD cards, I will agree, there's a lot of that. And to anyone who's considering buying accessories of that nature, um, Try and get your SD card from a leg legitimate source because a lot of them are fake, even the genuine ones that look. I've had quite a few of them. Um, the best thing to do is when you buy an SD card to make sure it's legit, is contact the manufacturer, give them the serial number and ask them, is this the real deal? And they'll tell you. Um, and that's the main way of finding out whether your SD card or a flash media storage, whatever you're using, is um, legit or fake. Um, in terms of um, chargers, be careful about buying them. If they feel light compared to another one you've got that's a bit heavier, weigh them. There'll be a, there'll be a, quite a big difference. And generally, the fake ones don't have the uh, CE, um, you know, legitimate safety precaution um, measures within the actual charger to stop it um, overheating, to st stop it catching fire, to stop it overcharging the battery um, so a lot of the safety measures that are put in uh, Europe that the EU demand that certain products have these safety measures in them um, for example in China when they try and duplicate some of the Canon chargers they don't put these safety um, measures in the device so it is a, a big concern um, and that's just industry wise so just keep that in mind because I do know there was an issue of a child being electrocuted once. So um, be mindful about buying anything that is to charge something up through the mains um, that is a grey import. I would be cautious, very cautious on that. Um, I did buy a uh, battery grip for my uh, 80D camera um, and the one I got off eBay was a counterfeit fake, com 
completely fake though. This wasn't a Canon product from a Canon factory. It was actually someone's made an attempt to try and copy it. Um, when I decided to buy the legitimate one from Amazon, I weighed them, there was a hundred grams difference. There was a, a, a tactile feel difference as well. So I ended up sending that back and complaining to eBay about it because that's where it came from and kept the legitimate one. Nearly 40% of people responding to the survey said they bought fake SD cards and over a quarter had bought fake batteries. Back at Canon, Lee comes across fakes on a daily basis. And it's not just high-end cameras, even point-and-shoot compact cameras are being faked. This is a counterfeit Canon uh, camera. It's actually not a Canon camera at all. Uh, we actually don't make this model. Uh, a counterfeiter has tried to take advantage of using the Canon brand, and actually if you switch the product on, uh, you can see it even comes up with the, with the Canon logo. The fakers are smart enough to have programmed the software in this camera to tell you it's a Canon, even though it's not. Lee's concerned about the safety of some of the fake camera equipment, like this charger. You can see on this fake product already, uh, this wire has come loose. You could get a very nasty electric shock. If you also happen to have a fake Canon battery, the combination of the two could actually be quite dangerous. Uh, the charger would not be protecting the battery and we don't know how stable and how well that battery was being made. And this fake flash could be shockingly bad. We uh, don't know where or how this product was made. The real concern was uh, the connection. You could get a shock, uh, or potentially it might damage the camera or might not actually work. Photographers Tristan and Chris have had their fingers burned with online shopping. They won't be making the same mistake again. So I just want to round up what I've been saying in, in this video and to try and um, break down what the BBC have gone through. And they've, they've made it very dramatical about fake products and they've said fake and counterfeit a lot in this uh, segment about camera equipment, especially in regards to Canon equipment. And I get very annoyed when, when I first watched this and I thought, this is very, very biased um, towards um, making you, the consumer, buy legitimate products in the UK. We all know everyone in the UK gets ripped off when it comes to electricals, when you can buy the same products elsewhere a lot cheaper. Anyway, what I just want to say is be careful and mindful of what you're buying, but if you make an informed choice from a reasonable seller, um, you know, there are some good ones and there are some bad ones. But if you know what you're getting into, Graham Ports can save you a lot of money. And in a lot of cases, the product that you're getting in Asia versus America versus Australia versus the UK, it's made in the same factory. So it's the same product. The only difference might be different serial numbers, maybe a little bit of... Um, difference in the packaged accessories um, but that's your main difference and for me if you're going to get a professional camera or a professional lens it's going to outlive that one year warranty pretty quickly and it'll probably it's not been unheard for cam, ca, Canon lenses and Canon cameras to last over five years so what good is that one year warranty to you now Anything can fail, even a brand new camera can fail. Um, you know, same with a computer and a computer hard drive. Um, just because it's brand new doesn't mean it's gonna last forever. Um, and I'll, you know, it's very possible you might just buy a brand new lens, leave it sitting, gathering dust in your garage, and you might not use it for a year and a half. And then when you decide to use it, something happens, you contact Canon and say, there's a problem with it, oh, I'm sorry sir, it's over your warranty period, we can't do anything for you. But it doesn't mean that our options for you, you know, you can go to Canon and get it repaired by their service centre, um, providing there's uh, parts available for it to be repaired, they'll charge you for doing the repair, but it's not like they won't do the repair for you at all. Um, I want to bring an example to you, so there is an example for you to base your um, 
conclusion or your decision is I bought a Sigma 500mm prime lens, right, from America, came from America. When I got it, there was a problem with the contact block on the back and it wouldn't connect with the camera properly and I did have a focus issue. So I contacted the company that sold it via eBay. And the name was Adorama, if you're wondering, a well-known retailer in America. They said to me, oh, sorry, uh, you're happy, happy to bring it back, send it up back, back to us. Obviously, I knew there'd be a lot of faffing about with postage. So I decided, what if I got Sigma in the UK to fix it? They agreed, not an issue. Contacted Sigma, told them about the equipment I got. The fact that it came from America wasn't an issue because I was going to be paying for the repair. And as it happened, Adorama, I was quite lucky, said, obviously they're based in the UK, uh, USA, and they said, we'd be happy to pay for the repair, you know, because they didn't want to go to the hassle of having it returned and then them trying to resell it. Um, so I actually got a really good deal out of that. But I just wanted to make this point out that just because it comes from a different region don't mean that the manufacturer won't repair it because it'll be quite obvious to them it's a legitimate Canon product and their engineers will have repaired grey imports before. Believe me, they will have. So I just hope this video was a little bit helpful, insightful in my breakdown of what the BBC have tried to tell you here that it's a fake product, it's counterfeit. It's quite annoying because it's come from the same factory. Doesn't this, if they turn around and said, it's a grey import, you've got to be wary of this, be careful, it's up to you to make your mind up, fine. I wouldn't have a problem with the video at all. But when they turn around and start saying it's counterfeit, it's fake, or you shouldn't buy it, it's scaring, trying to scare people off, um, because they want you to go to, to a legitimate source and, you know, pay over the odds, basically. You know, that's what they want you to do. Because um, no doubt this video has been sponsored by Canon. I believe it will have been. So just do your research. Be mindful of what you're buying. And I hope this video has been informative. I've tried to be as honest and to the point and give you as much information as I can. Um, and feel free to make any comments about what you feel uh, you would do. You know, would you prefer to buy a UK product from a UK source? or buy a grain pot. Have you had problems with grain pots? Um, personally, I've had an issue with one particular company. Um, I won't mention it, but they never sent it to me. But in regards to grain pots I've had delivered and I've actually used, um, I've got an ATD I've not had any problems with. I've got a 100 to 400 Mark II L lens. Seems fine to me, no problems. I have a 70 to 200 2.8 L lens. No problems with that, works fine. So it's up to you to make your mind up, but I'm having a hard time justifying a one year warranty being worth four, five, six hundred pounds. The choice is yours, but thank you for watching.